Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arius, and today we're going to be talking about everything Arturis Therapeutics, including their recent deal with CSL, their current financial position, and the status of their pipeline. We'll also take a good hard look at my original investment thesis and if it still holds true after two years of holding. And I'll talk about what I see for the company in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and leave any video suggestions and feedback in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get into it. First, the big news since I last talked about Arcturus is the new deal with CSL. The two will collaborate to develop new mRNA vaccines using Arcturus's technologies and CSL's existing global footprint. For those who don't know, and I certainly didn't, CSL is an Australian-based biotech company with a market cap of roughly $90 billion and revenue of about $10 billion or so. They also have the second largest flu vaccine on the market, which may be an area they turn to Arcturus to help them compete with other mRNA flu vaccines on the market. In this deal, Arcturus will receive a $200 million payment upfront, which bolsters their cash position drastically. This deal also includes a potential for $4 billion in milestone payments, both in development and commercial. In return, Arcturus will provide CSL with their star mRNA technologies to target COVID, the flu, and three other undisclosed targets. This was a big deal at the time it was announced, and it breathed life back into the stock, but it has since returned to prior lower levels. I see this deal as a massive win for Arcturus because, in my eyes, it drastically increases the chances Arcturus will get something on the market relatively soon, which is key for validating their technology. However, giving up ownership of their main ARCT-154 COVID vaccine program significantly limits their upside for the short term, as we will talk about a bit more later. Now let's move on to a review of their financial position. As of the end of Q3, they had a cash position net of current debt of roughly $208 million, with an additional $30 million in long-term debt. It would total operating expenses per quarter of roughly $50 million. That only gives them about a year left in runway, assuming flat operating expenses and minimal offsetting revenues. CSL's $200 million cash payment adds at least another year of runway, by my conservative math, getting them to the start of Q4 2023. I therefore think there is a relatively low risk of bankruptcy in the near future, and as we will see later, management thinks they will make it even further out with the current cash. But the real question is, when will one of their programs get to the market, prove their technology, and start generating meaningful for cash flows? For an answer to that, let's take a look at their pipeline. The most advanced program was ARCT-154, a COVID vaccine and booster candidate, but this will now be taken over for further development by CSL. They recently reported relatively positive results from their large phase three trial, but further communications of the development will be taken over by CSL as well. COVID vaccines still make up a large market opportunity, but that is shrinking by the day, and they will now only be getting 40% of the profits from the program. This drastically lowers the ceiling for 154, but raises the chances it gets into the market successfully. Additionally, they will be partnering with CSL on an mRNA-enabled flu vaccine that I think will likely be combined yearly with the COVID booster. This combined program has the highest economic potential going forward, and we'll delve further into this later in the video. The next furthest along candidate is ARCT-810, which is intended to treat OTC deficiency. They are currently enrolling participants in a phase two trial, but at a much slower pace than was intended originally. It also has a smaller market opportunity with a relatively small prevalence as estimated by Arcturus of 10,000 people. Management stated in the conference call that they should release interim data from the phase two trial sometime next year. 810 is another chance to move out our tourist technology, build some know-how to get into the drug market, and start getting a return on one program to accelerate investment in the next few. Finally for our tourist pipeline is ARCT-032. ARCT-032 is an inhaled treatment for cystic fibrosis, which our tourist expects to file a CTA for in Q4 of 2022. Cystic fibrosis represents a much larger opportunity for Arcturus, with the company estimating its prevalence between 85 and 100,000 people. However, the program is still yet to enter human trials, and thus has a long road to get to the open market. Before we review my investment thesis and what has changed since then, let's go over my notes from our conference call. First, my notes regarding CSL. As I said earlier, they will be responsible for all further communications around Arcturus's COVID vaccine, so we will have to monitor that channel going forward for more information. Additionally, management clarified that if CSL uses any of Arcturus's technology in any way in their programs, it will trigger the full financials of the deal. This should assuage some investors' concerns that CSL had developed their own self-amplifying mRNA technology, and that may somehow end up excluding Arcturus from compensation if CSL used their own technology. But management seemed pretty confident that that would not be the case. They also confirmed they could be combining flu programs to CSL, which is a massively underrated opportunity that we will discuss later. 
perhaps most importantly, once the deal closes, management expects to have even more cash runway than I did, projecting three years of cash runway versus my two. This is even assuming no revenue from program sales in the market. Additionally, they are expecting CSL milestones to cover all of the program costs associated with CSL. This is excellent news that they are expecting significant runway going forward and de-risk the company greatly. Of course, the CSL deal means that they have terminated their current agreement with VinBioCare. They will be still working together under a mutual supply agreement. We'll have to look for more clarity on their relationship with VinBioCare moving forward. Moving on from CSL, Arturis has landed a new deal with the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, also known as BARDA, that will award Arcturus a little more than $60 million over three years to prepare for further influenza-like pandemics. Another positive note was on their CF program, where they were very optimistic with the results from animal models so far and are looking forward to reporting results next year. In combination with those interim results, they will share info on a new target in the liver. Overall, management seemed pretty positive and they have good reason to be with the CSL deal. However, everything is not as they've promised in the past. Let's rewind to 2020 when I first invested in Arcturus and the reasoning behind that investment. The main reason for my investment was Arcturus's technology is vastly superior to any others that I was aware of, including Moderna or Pfizer. The most useful part of their technology package is Star Technology. This tech is massively beneficial as it allows for significantly smaller doses, which are cheaper and should generally come with less side effects, due to the lower dose size. Despite the smaller dose, Star vaccines could still potentially be more effective than conventional mRNA vaccines as well. The advantages of Star make it hard to overstate how much they elevate Arcturus' position in the competitive marketplace. Arcturus' ability to lyophilize their vaccines makes it significantly easier to set up a cold chain to distribute their vaccines as well. And their lunar lipid nanoparticle delivery technology makes administration of mRNA safer and more effective, although I'm not sure there's a market difference between lunar and anything Moderna or BioNTech have. But their combination of superior technologies is why I invest in Arcturus in the first place. Let's now take a look at what I have learned from the two years of following the company and their execution in that time. Well, what hasn't changed in that time is they still have the best-in-class technology, with Star in particular proving a huge advantage going forward. However, a lot has changed. When I first started following the company, they had a huge opportunity to go after creating a COVID-19 vaccine. They were targeting emergency approvals in the summer of 2021. That slipped to the end of 2021, then early 2022, then late, and now the year has ended and Arcturus still does not have any approvals for either a primary vaccination or a booster. Their recent big deal with CSL could be viewed as admitting defeat and the management's ability to bring drugs to market on their own, and while it also could be viewed as CSL recognizing Arcturus's technology and Arcturus taking advantage of CSL's massive footprint and distribution, I'm still very disappointed that management was not able to get this done on their own. Current management failed to capture one of the biggest opportunities they could ever ask for, just as their technology was reaching maturity. Everyone, worldwide, suddenly needed to get a vaccine, and they failed to be provided for anyone despite all of the rules and regulations that were lifted to allow it happen. Again, this is super disappointing. Now, for a moment of truth, let's talk about how I got to my decision to sell out of Arcturus. Arcturus' management projects that they should have three years of cash on the balance sheet once the deal with CSL closes. That's a decent cash buffer out to nearly 2026. That's some pretty decent runway to ride out this market cycle, much longer than some of the other companies I still own, and this lowers the risk side of the risk reward equation. However, their upside has been severely diminished by losing significant sales of the COVID vaccine. They also forfeited some upside by partnering with CSL and giving away the 154 program in return for just a 40% royalty back on the sales. This has brought some of my bull case projections from some astronomical numbers if they truly took advantage of the COVID vaccine opportunity down to some more reasonable levels like you are seeing on screen now. And that's only if they're successful with the CSL partnership. All of this adjustment to the risk reward equation in combination with the roughly 50% price decline leaves the company at a reasonable place. My real issue with the company is their complete failure to take advantage of the COVID vaccine market. This shows that either their technology is just not ready for prime time, or that their current management team is not competent enough to make it happen. Neither of these things bode well for the long-term success of the company. Think about it. If they could not move to take advantage of the COVID vaccine market, with all of the massive forces making it as easy as possible, how could I legitimately expect them to capture other markets in the future without all of those things working in their favor? Due to this inability to capture the market in a timely manner, I have lost confidence in the company and subsequently have sold out of my position. I moved all of that money into Tesla, Recursion, Ginkgo, and Lemonade. Finally, for my conclusions, changing your mind when you are wrong is one of the hardest things to do in my opinion. I find it so easy to dig my heels in and argue, especially with something that will not play out for another 10 years, meaning the cycle of learning is much longer. However, 
Changing your mind when presented with opposing evidence is one of the most important skills when investing. I just wish I had changed my mind sooner and moved into companies that had more conviction in than Arcturus. This is all not to say that I don't think Arcturus can be successful. I especially like them as a buyout candidate for a big pharma company with their excellent technology that could be applied to a broad range of diseases. I still think Arcturus could be a winner for those who hold or are buying in at these levels, but I've decided to concentrate into companies which I have more conviction in. The biggest learning that I will take from this is that I need to place a larger emphasis on the quality of management rather than solely on the technology. I have sold all of my Arcturus at a 45% loss and redeployed it the same day into Tesla, Recursion, Ginkgo, and Lemonade, companies whose future I like a lot more going forward. Thanks for watching. What do you think of my decision to sell Arcturus? Do you currently own an Arcturus and will you hold on? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching and have a great rest of your day.